Okay, let me get this set up. <clears throat> Let's see, I'm, I just started the webinar.
Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Let me know you can hear me and see me in the chat box. Hey, Pamela, can you hear me? Jennifer Hart, hey, good morning. How are you? Callan Winnett, Nazim, can you guys hear me? There's a, a chat box if you want to go ahead and let me know that you can hear me and that you can see me before we get started this morning. We've got a few more minutes. Happy Saturday. Hey, Pamela, thank you. Hey, Nazim. Awesome. Tracy, hey, good morning. Jennifer. <laughs> good, good, good. All right, all right, all right. So this is my second webinar, and um, I, I've always done these things in person, and the webinars are super cool, though, because you guys can do this from your jammies with your hot tea or your coffee this morning. Hey, Ruth. Awesome. Thank you so much for letting me know you can hear me. And so, um, you know, there's always uh, technical stuff involved, so if there's an issue at any time during the webinar, Give me your feedback and let me know if there's something that you're not seeing or hearing. I'm going to be doing a screen share because I put this really awesome, powerful PowerPoint together this morning. And I'm going to be going through that with you as we talk about why we need to detox. Because, you know, in January, everybody wants to lose weight and get healthy. But they don't think about why they need to detox before they start the whole process of, you know, getting themselves healthy or in order to get healthy and in order to lose weight. People don't think about that. And so I put this PowerPoint together because it's critical and it's vital that we all detox to start our journey. <clears throat> I've even put some really amazing case studies in here for you so that you can see. And I'm going to tell you the whole story behind three of these different patients or clients that I've had and, uh, and how the detox actually helped them to fix their thyroid, fix their cholesterol, fix their hormones, whatever it was. So uh, it looks like uh, we've got about a minute to go. Let me see if I can get the uh, PowerPoint up so that you guys can see it. And then we can go ahead and move through this. Hold on one second here. <clears throat> hey, Sharon, good morning. Good to see you. All right. Let's see what we got here. Hold on one second, guys. I'll be right back. Let me see if I can get this up and running. Okay, let me know if you guys can see this. All right, that's, okay, perfect. I guess this is, this is right. So, um, actually that's not what I was wanting. I wanted you guys to see the full screen. So hold on just a second. All right, I think I've got it now. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, can everyone see this? Give me a heads up. Let me know if you can see it. 
Greg. Okay. Everyone else can see it too. Give me a thumbs up. All right. All right, guys, sorry about that. I'm back. Okay, here we go. So welcome to the 2019 Detox. I love doing this detox every year. Um, in fact, I've been doing this detox for many years with my patients. And not only do we do it in January, but I'll do it throughout the year with different, uh, with different clients. Sometimes whenever they come on with me and, you know, whether they come on or start programs with me in February or July or August, oftentimes it's detox where it, that's where we have to start is with detoxing and doing antimicrobials, antiparasitics. We have to get rid of underlying infections and toxins in order to start the whole process of, of getting people healthy. And so this is something that I do it throughout the year with you. And some of you who are on the call, who have who are already uh, with me and working with me? You've probably already been through this, um, but oftentimes, whenever we get to January, we're doing it again. So, I have patients who have been doing this with me for years now, and many of us will detox throughout the year, where we incorporate green smoothies and such throughout the year, and uh, and then when January comes, we do a really really heavy one. But for those of you who are who who start with me at other times throughout the year, we still start with this, and then we go back and we do it again every January. So let's let me scroll. Let me see how do I go to the next slide here. So detox is vital to good mental, physical, and emotional health. In fact, detox is the foundational pillar for fixing just about any type of health issue that you could possibly have, from correcting brain chemistry imbalances to correcting metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes, GI issues including leaky gut, Crohn's, um, uh, reducing inflammation in the body and in the brain so that we can prevent disease, right? And to, sorry, there's a typo there, to reverse autoimmune disease. Um, autoimmune disease, by the way, pretty much every time we can trace it back to gut issues, all right? And so we still have to go in and do detox. Um, and to lose weight effectively for the long term, that, that is huge. Again, in January, everybody wants to lose weight. I want to take off 15 pounds. I want to take off 10 pounds. But how many of you on the call have been um, yo-yo dieting since you were in high school, right? You take off 10 pounds, you gain back 15. Then the next year, you take off 15, you gain back 20. And by the time that you're in your 40s, you have this weight that you just cannot take off. Well, we're going to go over that today, and we're going to talk about why you have to detox in order to effectively lose weight. I have people who come to me all the time, and they will have a myriad of different symptoms going on from, you know, headaches to chronic fatigue, whatever it is, but they also have added weight that they just can't seem to budge. And the first thing that I tell them is, look, we're going to get your body healthy first, and we're going to detox. That's going to be incorporated. Once we get all of your systems back up and running, then we can go in and we can lose weight. Usually what they see is that in the process of getting their body detoxed and getting their systems working again, all their endocrine systems, getting their gut healthy, their brain chemistry healthy, their thyroid, adrenals, uh, their male and female hormones. Once we get all that balanced, typically by that time, they've already dropped some weight. 
And then whatever additional weight that they want to lose, it makes it easy to lose weight and they're not going to gain it back so easily. So what are we going to learn today? We're going to learn about the side effects and signs of toxicity. So let's go ahead and let's go through that. Side effects and signs of toxicity include, and how many of you have these symptoms or have come to me with these symptoms? Or some of you who are new to the, uh, to the class to today, um, you may notice that you have some of these symptoms. Everything from memory loss, acid reflux, um, back pain, irritable bowel syndrome, um, joint inflammation and stiffness, like the whole body just aches, uh, low testosterone in men, or high estrogen in women, right? So a lot of hormone imbalances. Unexplained weight gain, we just talked about that. Um, central nervous system disorders, I see a ton of those, a ton of those. And even blurred vision. I can't tell you how many times on people's symptom sheets that they tell me that they're having issues with their vision. Very, very common. And uh, I'm gonna jump right in here and I'm gonna talk to you about a case study of a client who had a lot of these symptoms and more. She also had chronic fatigue. <clears throat> Excuse me, she had also chronic fatigue. She was losing her hair. Her skin was looking terrible. So I'm just gonna jump right into a case study first. And then we're gonna go into some of the other things that we're gonna learn along the way. And I'm gonna incorporate a case study with this as well. So this is, the, this is a case study of a 63-year-old female. She started with me about, I would say, five months ago, six months ago. And she had all of the symptoms that you just saw on the previous page, all right, including some of the ones that I just told you. She actually works in the medical field. She works in one of the hospitals here in Austin, Texas. So I love working with people in the medical field. I have a lot of nurses and psychotherapists actually who are my clients who come to me to work with them. And um, so when she started with me, she had a lot of stuff going on and we did a myriad of different labs, including the ones that I'm gonna show you here in just a minute. This is her functional blood chemistry panel. We also ran neurotransmitters, genetics, and hormones with her. <clears throat> and the first thing that we ended up starting her with was the detox that I'm gonna be doing with, with all of you um, starting this January, February timeframe. We actually started this with her because she had some really bad looking cholesterol levels. Her liver enzymes were super high. She was having a lot of liver stress, which was showing me that she had a lot of toxicity. She also had a lot of inflammation in her body. Now we could tell that she had a lot of inflammation based off of her symptoms, but when we went in and looked at her labs, we could tell also. So I'm going to show you this and I'm going to have to do a split screen. So give me a second to get the screen split so that you can see this. But what I've done was I have put her before labs on here and then we put her through the detox. And so, and we, and so about a month later, right around that time, um, we did the after labs. And so, so that you could see the changes that we make, the changes that I'm going to show you are not atypical. In fact, they're typical. We get results like this every single time. And so that makes me very, very proud and happy to show you these labs today. Give me one second to get this up here. <clears throat> I'm just gonna stop the screen for a second because I'm gonna have to fumble around. So give me just one second.
All right, can you guys see this? All right, good, good. Nazim, are you uh, raising your hand because you have a question or were you just uh, letting me know that you can see this? <laughs> just wanna make sure. We, and we will definitely take some Q&A after the call as well. That would probably be the easiest. I do have um, Greg helping me with Q&A. If you guys do have a question or a comment while I'm going through the PowerPoint slides, and so, uh, yeah, just let us know if, if there's a problem. So here are the before and after labs. And there are a few things that I want to focus in on. So there's a lot of info here, but we're just going to focus in on a few specifics, okay? So let me just come over here to the cholesterol readings. <clears throat> All right, this is what we want to look at right here. Can you guys see that? Okay, good. So... Let's take a look at this, because this is pretty impressive. Her cholesterol was 248, okay? We put her, oh, and let's go back and let's take a look, because I think this is important for you guys to see this. August 31st, so she started in September. I think she started about two weeks later. She had to get her stuff shipped over to her and all of that, you know, all of her products. And uh, so we looked at it about five weeks later, okay, when she completed the uh, month-long detox. Let's take a look. Total cholesterol, 248. Total cholesterol, 197. These are typical results that we see. I'm totally serious. I mean, you can see it, right? But it's a lot of people just are in disbelief. This client Remember I told you that she works in one of the hospitals, St. David's, I believe, here in Austin. She was just couldn't believe it. And this is a food-based detox. Food really can heal you if you know how to use it. Her triglycerides were 316. Huge, huge inflammatory marker here with the triglycerides and a combination of her blood sugar also being super high. That, uh, that together, those two things together combined with high C-reactive protein, which is high inflammation, uh, is a huge trigger for cardiovascular risk. I mean, huge, right? And so it's not the cholesterol alone. Cholesterol is not an enemy. We need it. Cholesterol is super important for our bodies. Yet we've been taught that cholesterol is dangerous and we always need to get it low, low, low. But just like with anything else in our body, whether it's cholesterol or blood pressure or blood sugar or even oxygen levels, we need to have everything in balance. We don't want to have it too high or too low. Cholesterol is super important to our immune systems, to proper brain function and cognitive function. It's necessary for us to make our hormones. Cholesterol is, is very important for us, and it, it is our friend, but we just want to have it in balance. And when you take a high cholesterol level combined with high inflammation and high blood sugar, that is what's dangerous. It's not the high cholesterol necessarily all on its own that's dangerous. So 316 down to 124. That's over 100 points. That's huge, right? LDL went from 146 to 132. And so I just want you to see this now. Her HDL did go down. But I will have you know that it did go up a little bit because we were balancing her out and her body was detoxing. Everything kind of went down, which is fine. After we get the slate cleaned and we get the body detoxed, then we can go in and we can rebuild and we can balance exactly the way that we need to. So I just want to show you the changes that we made in cholesterol. That was huge. Now, she also had liver enzymes very, very high. And I can tell you that when your liver enzymes are really high, um, that really is gonna make you feel terrible. So let's jump in and let's take a look at that. Just gonna kind of try to get these a little bit level here. So liver enzymes are right here on the left, AST, ALT, and GGT. You can see that these were very high. Let's dial down a little bit on, on the ranges. You'll see two different sets of ranges here. That's because 
we like to use a set of functional ranges that in many cases are more narrow or they're tightened down compared to the standard ranges that are used, okay? Um, so let's take a look at the AST. Her AST liver enzyme was 41. Even by allopathic standards or by, you know, average um, or, you know, normal uh, uh, blood level standards that are used in Western medicine, she was still high. Um, according to functional ranges, she was very high. Let's see where she went in a month. AST, you can see it right here. Her AST went to 20. So she went from 41 to 20, right back inside a super healthy range. It didn't take long to detox the liver. Her ALT was 87. It was very, very high. Her ALT over here, you can see, went down to 34. Right there. Huge, huge change. And let's take a look at her GGT. Her GGT was 202, super, super high, like scary high. We got her down to 80 in about 30 days and we continued working on it and she's doing, she continues to show improvements, okay? In a case like hers, we are going to do detox for more than a month, but this is what we did for her in 30, in 30 days, in one month. So I wanted you to, uh, to see that. Um, let's go back and let's take a look at, um, let me, let me go back to the, to the regular PowerPoint screen. So hold on just a second. All right, guys, here we go. So that was an awesome case study, and this is what we do with detox. Now, this client, we will also be working on her hormones, um, which this, this did make a huge change in her hormones. I don't check hormones for about 90 days. So if we have a hormone imbalance, I wait about 90 days so that we can get enough change in the labs uh, so that when we recheck the labs, we can go ahead and, and see the changes that we need to make. Some items that I find that are out of balance, you'll see that I will check those at a 30-day mark like this, while others I'll wait a little bit longer. If it's brain chemistry, I usually wait three months to four months. If it's hormones, I usually wait three to four months so that we can see the changes. If we are working on gut um, to change the biome of the gut, we will check the, we will do the GI map test. We wait about six months for that. All right, let's move on. What else are we gonna learn today? We're gonna learn how we can leverage our genetics to understand how our body does or doesn't detox. Based on your genetic blueprint, we can understand perhaps why your body isn't detoxing properly, right? And we can understand what we need to supplement with for the long term to keep your body detoxing. So for example, there are certain gene mutations that if you have negative expression or malexpression of the gene, that you're not going to make proper glutathione. Glutathione is a substance that your body normally makes. But under certain circumstances, when you have certain genetic mutations, you're going to not make a viable glutathione. And glutathione is used to detox you from a cellular level, and it's also used as an anti-inflammatory in your body. In fact, it's the second most powerful anti-inflammatory and the first most powerful antioxidant in your body. So if you're having issues with proper glutathione production, 
and you come to me in a state like this patient was in the beginning, we're not only going to use glutathione therapeutically to open up the detox pathways to allow you to detox, but we know that we're going to have to keep you on a glutathione supplement for your life. We want to do that to make sure that we keep your detox pathways open so that we can allow your, your body to detox at a cellular level. And this is what we use. We use this knowledge so that we can understand how we can prevent things from happening like cancers or cellular mutations. Cells are only going to start mutating if they are undergoing a lot of cellular stress and toxicity. When that happens, the cell has two choices. The cell will either die, will undergo cellular apoptosis and die because it's become toxic and it can't, it's, it's sick basically and it either will die or it will mutate. The body is designed to survive. The body actually is designed to heal itself if you remove the interferences, i.e. the toxins and the infections, underlying toxins and infections. The body is designed perfectly. It will heal itself if you give it the opportunity. But if you don't give it the opportunity, the body will start to get very, very sick, even on the cellular level. And the body will try everything that it can to survive, but that's where cellular mutations start to happen. That's when cancer starts to happen, right? So if we can understand the mechanisms of detoxification, and we can look at the genetics to understand how we can keep our bodies detoxifying, and we can understand how to change our um, our environment and how we can manipulate our foods and our uh, our lifestyle so that we can better take care of our body. If we can look at the genetic blueprint, we can understand how to do that. Then we can bring ourselves back to health and then we can keep ourselves healthy, right? And so that's another thing that, uh, that we're going to touch on today and I'm going to show you a couple of case studies. So we're going to talk about the steps involved in the detox process. And, uh, and this, this is a wonderful little diagram, uh, uh, you know, courtesy of Olive Retreat. Uh, this is a beautiful program. This talks about uh, nutritional balancing. This helps you to understand um, uh, that, that, that dieting, you know, calorie cutting, um, um, uh, you know, the, that calorie cutting before you detox can actually increase toxic density in the cells. And when that happens, you're going to have rebound weight gain. Why does this happen? This happens because your body will produce fat cells. The liver will actually do that, okay? The body will produce fat cells and it will encapsulate the toxins that you have accumulated in your body, environmental toxins. Environmental toxins can be anything from, uh, you, most environmental toxins are, are petroleum based, and that can include uh, uh, things found in um, synthetic hormones. We eat synthetic hormones when we eat meats that are not organic, because they're pumping these animals full of synthetic hormones. All right, and pesticides, those are also petroleum-based. So if you're eating, if you're eating foods, um, produce that is not organic, you are actually putting pesticide into your body and it is petroleum-based. Um, also animal products that are not organic, if they're feeding those animals uh, um, grains and other foods that are, you know, it, those are not organic, uh, foods that those animals are eating, then they are eating those pesticides, which are petroleum-based. The animals cannot break those petroleum-based products down, and then they get butchered, and then you eat that meat. You're also eating those petroleum-based products, so you're getting them that way. You're getting them from your lotions and your other um, beauty products that you use, all of your lotions and your body soaps. And your, and your face creams and your makeups. You're getting them also from your household cleaners. They are full of petroleum-based products. So are your laundry soaps. And all of these things that you come into contact with on a daily basis that are in your environment are ending up in your body. The body has a hard time detoxing those. That's why they are called carcinogenic agents. And the body will have mechanisms set in place to try to protect itself from these environmental toxins. So the liver will produce fat cells 
and those fat cells will encapsulate the toxins and then it will be deposited and stored in your body. And when you go to try to lose weight, so in January, if you start a keto diet, for example, okay, and you start forcing the fat cells to, to, to burn off, then you are releasing those toxins back into your body. Some people get super sick when they do that. I just started with a client last week uh, or maybe two weeks ago. And she tried detoxing last year doing, I mean, not detoxing, sorry. She tried a ketogenic diet last year to lose weight. And at first she started feeling good. And then her hair started falling out. She started getting really sick. And she's been sick for the last year. And she just started with me. And I went through this whole, uh, I didn't go through the PowerPoint, but I went through this whole like class with her yesterday, explaining to her why she ended up getting so sick. Because she started forcing the fat off of her body and it was releasing toxins back into her body and it started making her very, very sick and started affecting her thyroid and her female hormones and her brain chemistry. And so it's super important that before we start trying to lose weight, that we detox. We have to have a cellular cleansing, a liver cleansing. We have to really get these toxins out of our bodies. And, um, and again, you know, with detox, we can eliminate these, these toxins so that we don't end up having a rebound toxic overload that causes us to actually gain weight again. I want to talk to you about another case study. So this is a male, 46 years old. He uh, manages... Um, a bunch of different uh, restaurants in Austin and so the guy is super 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 busy and he started not feeling well when he came to see me he was having many different symptoms from fatigue to weight gain he couldn't understand why the weight was packing on he thought maybe it was like stress and he was having trouble sleeping and he was starting to have anxiety issues and that's just to name a few and he had been going to the gym to work out and he was noticing that he was having um, exercise intolerance and he had never had that before. And he also was having a really hard time losing weight. In fact, he would notice that after, after three or four weeks of working out, he was noticing that he was actually feeling worse instead of better. So I wanna, I'm gonna jump back in here. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna stop the screen share for a second so I can get these up and show you side by side what we ended up doing with him. But before I do that, let me tell you what ended up happening. So this, this guy came in to see me and we, you know, we, we ordered his, his lab work. And when his lab work came back, we took a look at this. And I leaned in um, and I told him, oh my God, like you, we need to detox you right away. We've got to detox you immediately. You've got a lot of inflammation. Your lipid levels are high. Um, you are you are a ticking time bomb for a heart attack, and we've got to detox you very quickly. So we ordered the the detox kit for him, and before he was ever even even able to start it. So this was about maybe four or five days after I saw him. <coughs> Excuse me. This is about four or five days after I saw him. He ended up having a heart attack, and he ended up in the hospital. And he contacted us from the hospital and said, oh my God, you know, I had a heart attack. Fortunately, the heart attack wasn't a massive heart attack. And he was out of the hospital within a couple of days and he started, he then started his detox as soon as he got out of the hospital. And let me show you the before and after here. Give me just a second.
All right, guys, here we go. Let me show you his before and after. And let's just take a look at some dates here really quick. All right, so January 30th is when the labs came back and he ended up coming in like the following week and then a few days, a couple of days later, he ended up having his heart attack and then he got out of the hospital. So it was about two weeks later that he started. So that would have been like around the middle of February. And around the middle of March is when we redid his, his test again, just to see what progress that we made in the 30 days. I really like to do very, very close follow-up <clears throat> um, because I'm very, very data-driven. Everything I do is based off of data and I wanna make sure that we're going in the right direction. I'm not going to take the approach of your, you know, typical, you know, allopathic, uh, I'm not going to take the typical allopathic approach, you know, take, first of all, we don't do pharmaceuticals. So, you know, take a pill and come back in six months. We don't do that. Um, so we did every, you know, we do everything that's food based and nootropics or nutrition based with, with supplementation. And I like to recheck very quickly to make sure that we're going in the right direction, because if we're not, I don't want you doing something for three months or six months and we don't even know if it's working right and then we scratch our heads later no i'm not going to do that i want to check it you know um i really want to stay on top of it check it every every 30 days and make sure that we're making the progress that we need to make you know in cases like this remember i told you that hormones and neurotransmitters we have to wait a little longer but let's take a look here so the the uh, cholesterol level was 277 and when we started with him, and you can see here that it's 209, so we dropped it well over, what, 60 points inside of about 30 days, and we still had some work to, work to do, but I was still super happy with that. Um, the triglycerides went down from 349 to 309. The LDL level went from 168 to 117, and this is... Um, the PowerPoint, I didn't, and I'm so sorry for this, I didn't get the first page on there, but he also had some liver enzymes that were really, really elevated. Well, in order to move these numbers in the cholesterol, we have to address the, the liver enzymes as well, and I don't have that to show you right now, and I'm so sorry about that. Uh, we can see here, though, you can see that I rechecked it, which means that I was monitoring that too, and the levels are looking really, really good. The GGT and the ALT levels are looking great. Um, so next time, I'll show it to you next time, but this is still, this is really good, good to see. And also I want to show you his homocysteine level was at an eight. Um, we like to see it between four and seven. So this says that zero to six is fine. I actually disagree with that. It should be between four and seven, but this is a systemic inflammatory marker. And um, as well as the C-reactive C protein, it's a systemic inflammatory marker. We like to see that less than one. And if you take a look here, his homocysteine level went from eight down to 4.7 in about 30 days. Now that's not, that doesn't always happen right away. Sometimes in the process of detoxing, we'll see homocysteine and CRP levels go up in the next month and then they go down. And that's because as the body is detoxing, sometimes it can get a little bit inflamed in the process because we have to bind those toxins and get them out of the body. So, but I like to check in, uh, I, I, I like to monitor that. In the last case study, we had actually seen that, that her inflammatory marker went up a little bit, but then in the, in the third month, when we did the third lab, then it dropped down like right back into, into normal levels. So um, that's really, really cool to see. And needless to say, he was feeling like a completely different person at that time. Let me uh, jump back into the PowerPoint here and I'll, I'll uh, and we'll continue on. Hold on just a second.
All right, guys. All right, guys. Thanks for thanks for bearing with me here. <laughs> it's a lot of like flipping through. Oh, it's a lot of clicking for me. Um, anyways, let's move on to the next slide. Um, we've already touched a little bit on some of the side effects of toxicity, but I want to um, I want to share uh, just this is a, just kind of more of a story. Um, but side effects of toxicity. Um, let's talk about that first and then I'll jump into the story because uh, this picture is depicting a little story that I want to share with you. Um, we've got issues with acne, right? Arthritis and joint pain. Again, autoimmune disorders. We touched on that earlier. Cardiovascular disease. I mentioned that to you in the last case study. Um, chronic fatigue, constipation, diabetes, diarrhea. Um, and I can't tell you how, how many people I see that struggle with diarrhea. I mean, then by the time that they come see me, they've had it for a long time. That's, that's a horrible thing to have to deal with. And so is the constipation. Um, fibromyalgia, headaches, hormone imbalances, anxiety and depression, um, mind racing, brain fog, trouble falling and staying asleep, and on and on. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And uh, whenever we have toxicity, you know, oftentimes we see that accompanied by underlying infections as well, which just adds to the toxicity. Underlying infections can include bacterial infections, viral infections, candida, and parasites. And it's not uncommon to have these chronic underlying infections. And um, whenever we have these, these chronic underlying infections, these infections produce a lot of toxins. Um, I'll call that, you know, a, a poop, right, from the, from the bacteria. The, the bacteria that are living in our bodies or the parasites living in our bodies, they have, they have waste products that they produce. And, they all, and, and we call those endotoxins. And endotoxins can cause us to be so, so sick and can change our brain chemistry in huge, huge ways that, are, that have very, very negative impacts on our ability to function. So whenever we're detoxing, we're it's not uncommon that we have also found underlying infections. So not only are we detoxing the, the you know, uh, petroleum-based products and heavy metals and other toxins, other environmental toxins in our body, but we're also uh, eliminating infections and we're detoxing that as well. Um, this young lady here, uh, she is a client of mine, and this is a picture of her with a very well-known producer named Jonathan Otto. He's a film, he's a filmmaker and producer of some very well-known documentaries around the world. And his most recent one that he did was um, Secrets of Anxiety and Depression or Anxiety and Depression Secrets. Um, and he, he invited me to come and speak on his, um, on his most recent documentary. And he asked me, you know, Dr. V, do you have um, anyone who would be happy to come up and tell their stories? And I had four people that came that day, and she was one of them. And she, she told her story. She's a, a, a business owner here in Austin, Texas. And she was suffering with a lot of these uh, side effects of toxicity that you see here, listed here. And um, she went through the program with me, and the first things that we had to do was detox with her and get rid of underlying infections. And with her, it was about a three or four month process of actually detoxing her. And so with most people, it is, but I, I wanna show you what you can do just in, in one month to, to get started, right? You know, it, we had to work with her quite a while to get rid of underlying infections, and therefore we had to work quite a while on, on the detoxes. <clears throat> but let's, uh, I've got a little slide here, underlying infections. And so um, I've got this here because that's gonna lead me into my next slide, which is talking about a, a another case study that this is the, the third and last one I'm showing you this morning. <clears throat> They're kind of involved, so they take quite a bit of time on the PowerPoints to go over with you. But this, this particular uh, client in the next slide that I'm gonna show you, um, she has been with me for about three years now. 
And I've been working with her and we've made really big strides with her. You know, the process of getting your body, um, uh, of getting all of your systemic engines working properly, it takes time. That doesn't mean that you're not going to start feeling changes soon within 30, 60, and 90 days. You're going to start feeling changes. And then that alone is going to motivate you to keep going. And it's going to help you understand that, you know, our body, our body is a, it's, it's a cellular mechanism and it takes time uh, to get all of your systemic engines working properly. Um, because, it, I mean, it just, it just, there's no way that it can happen overnight. But we have made huge progress with her. And she, uh, this last year, we started noticing that her thyroid started to get a little bit out of balance. And this was something new, okay, that had kind of popped up. And we started working with her. We did her annual blood work. We started working with her. And we noticed that there was a little bit of an underlying infection. So we, uh, we, we started working on the infections. And once we eliminated the infections, we started seeing that her thyroid started coming back into balance. And so I, I wanted to show you this because this is, this, is, this is another thing that can happen to the body that if, when we do detox and eliminate in, uh, the underlying infections associated uh, with, the, with the toxins in our body, that we can eliminate issues just like thyroid. So her thyroid issue was not an actual thyroid issue. Her thyroid issue was secondary to some underlying infections that were that was causing toxicity in her body, and until we addressed that, we weren't able to actually fix the thyroid issue. So let me show you this. Um, again, hold on just a second. Let me just uh, pause this really quick so that I can show you. All right, guys. So this is the this is the last case study this morning, but again, this is so important so that you can see this. When you are when your body is toxic, and or you have underlying infections associated with that, it can completely change different systemic engines in your body and not allow them to work properly. And this was a classic case of that. Again, her thyroid issue was not an actual thyroid issue. Now, I have been taking care of her for about three years now. So when this popped up, um, you know, we had kind of an idea. We were able to go back and look at all of her past data. And when we were trying to figure out the underlying cause of why her thyroid started to do that, we were able to figure out that it really wasn't actually a thyroid issue. Now, you know, if she had had uh, a regular, you know, Western medicine approach, they may have very well just put her on a thyroid uh, medication, but that would have never fixed the problem. In fact, it would have allowed the underlying problems to get worse. In other words, the infections and the toxicities would have built up. So now I want you to take a look at this. Her TSH, can you see that there? Her TSH was... Oh, actually, this is backwards. Sorry, guys. Um, I'm not going to flip it around because that'll take too long. <laughs> but <clears throat> this is the before on the right. This is the after on the left, okay? Her TSH was at 3.99. Um, TSH is, let's talk about that for just a second. The higher the number goes out of range, that can be indicative of a hypothyroid, all right? And so we, we needed to bring that number down a little bit. But not only did we look at that, we looked at her T4 and we looked at her T3. Her T4 was low. I really would like to see that at a minimum of six. So six, seven, even eight, <clears throat> that's a really good range. 
She was at 5.4. She had not previously been like that in the past two years. Her thyroid had looked fine. And T3, I like to see that between 100 and 180. And her T3 was low. So TSH is not actually your thyroid hormone. TSH is made in the pituitary gland. It's your thyroid stimulating hormone. And it stimulates the production of T4. And then T4 converts to T3. And that is your main thyroid hormone that gives you your, uh, that gives thyroid symptoms if it gets low. Then you start like hair falling out, you're tired, your skin gets dry, your nails get brittle, all of that. <clears throat> Interesting to note, for those of you who are not current patients of mine who may not know this, T4 and T3 are made in the gut and in the liver. The majority of it is made in the gut and in the liver, not in your thyroid, okay? And so having proper gut function and making sure that your liver is clean and able to work properly, that you're not having liver stress is super important. Um, TSH drives the production of T4. And then T4 converts to T3 in the gut and in the liver. And you have to have conversion factors as well. You have to have selenium. You have to have uh, B12 and folate to make the conversions. Um, you have to have iron uh, to make the conversions. And you actually have to have proper serotonin levels in your brain in order to make the conversions. So let, you know, if we had seen that, that TSH and T4 were normal, but T3 was low, then we would know that she was having trouble converting T4 to T3. And we would have to look at where is T3 converted, okay, in the gut and in the liver, and make sure those things are working right. And then we would need to make sure that her conversion factors are working right. They know that, that, that she, you know, is she in taking fluoride, which is preventing selenium from going into the cell. So maybe it's a selenium issue or really a fluoride issue. Or is her serotonin low? I've actually seen that in some case studies where everything, every underlying factor looked fine. But when we checked the brain chemistry, this, the serotonin was low. And, and once we got the serotonin levels up, then the T3 levels came up in the thyroid. So you have to look at a lot of different pieces of the puzzle. When I use my data-driven approach, I do a lot of different lab testing so that we can look at all the pieces of the puzzle and make sure that we're addressing everything and finding all the possible root causes of the problem. With her, it turned out that it was that it was an underlying infection. So take a look here. We 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 rechecked her. So this was end of August. So she started in her pro, her protocol in September. We checked it about five six weeks later, and you can see a change from three point nine nine to two point eight nine. This looks much better. Now we know what her normal is. So we have continued, or we are continuing, like working with her to get it down. I would like to see this for her in between um, one and two. So we're actually working on that, and we're due to recheck her again soon. Her T4 levels went up, and they're, they were looking much better in such a short period of time, from 5.4 to 5.8. And you can see her T3 level, she finally started getting conversions from 72 to 101 that we were able to actually make those conversions. And again, this all started with the foundational of detox, which includes getting rid of underlying infections. Let's go back to the PowerPoint now.
All right, guys. The rest of this will go a little bit faster. Um, let me go to the next slide. So I want to share with you just a little bit about my story because detox was a huge, huge component of my story. Um, that was me in Colorado this summer. I, uh, I typically leave Austin to get out of the heat because the heat, uh, I don't tolerate the heat very well. And for me to stay healthy, I need to stay active. As many of you know, we all need to stay physically active. And um, so this was me and my dog. And we were uh, hiking this summer up in the mountains of Colorado. I wasn't always healthy like that, though. I ended up becoming very, very sick about 15 years ago. I was a single mom uh, for the entirety of raising my son. That's my kiddo there. He's now 26 years old, chemical engineer, and uh, he's doing very, very well in his life. And this was a picture of, um, I looked healthy in this picture. <laughs> in fact, I was pretty sick. And um, I, uh, triggers for me was not knowing how to take care of myself. I knew some basics. Um, but uh, at, at back during this time, I was um, a sports medicine practitioner. Um, and I had three clinics in Austin. I traveled around the world working with Olympic athletes. And I was managing three sports medicine clinics here in Austin. I uh, was on a radio show with the University of Texas uh, talking about the injured athletes uh, during the football season and, and how long it would take to get them back on the field. And I was traveling around and I was trying to manage a home and raise my kid. And that was, my, that was, that was one of my triggers was the uh, stress that I had. And I ended up getting really, really sick um, after, after my father committed suicide. And uh, that was the, that, that was like the major trigger for me that, that threw me into getting super sick. And, um, and I ended up losing everything I had. And I didn't know how to take care of myself. And I didn't know that genetics played a huge role or my expression of my genes played a huge role in me getting really, really sick. And um, once, I, once I started looking at my genetics, and it's, it's, it was a miracle story that I even got any of my genes checked because this was back when nobody really understood um, how to look at genes and that you could use your genetics to empower you and show you how to change your environment and how to change your foods and what supplements to take to get your body chemistry working properly again. And uh, so this was me at a big event here that I did for the Taekwondo Nationals. Um, triggering event. Sorry, I didn't follow through with the, uh, with the, uh, with the slides and I ended up getting really sick and losing everything. That's this slide, right? I got sick and ended up losing everything. And once I started looking at, at my data and, and started uh, dialing down on my data, I learned that I had a lot of interferences and some of them, some of the big ones were genetics. I wasn't able to detox properly anyway. And I'm so lucky that I found this out. Because if I had not started um, opening my detox pathways genetically first with the glutathione genes that I told you about earlier and also my methylation genes, I probably would have ended up getting much sicker um, you know, in the process of trying to detox. I could have made myself much sicker. But um, I did look at the genetics. I started looking at all of my data. And I ended up, like I said, I had some very important people that that the universe or God popped into my life to help me to understand how to triage to get myself better and you know you can't just start here if you need to start here and you know usually starting starting in the right place involves detoxing first and I, I opened up my detox pathways um, utilizing methylated folate and and, um, and glutathione and then I started detoxing myself to get rid of a lot of the environmental toxins that I had accumulated over the years. And I learned that, um, that you know, I learned firsthand that removing that by, that if you remove the interferences, that your body can heal itself. Your body is programmed to heal itself. It's a self programming mechanism. It's amazing. But you have to remove the interferences first. And then your body can start the healing process, whether it's brain chemistry issues, 
thyroid issues, if you have type 2 diabetes, you know, fibromyalgia, some other type of autoimmune disease, it doesn't matter what it is, the foundational thing you have to start with is detoxing. And yes, my cure for myself and why I'm now helping you and why I help people all over the world, why this is my passion, um, is because um, I was able to bring myself back to health and uh, get my life back and, uh, and, and, and now I help everybody, everybody who comes to me. And my cure did start with detox. And you too can restore your health and you can lose weight and you can feel great. Um, but detox is where it all starts. Um, I won't go into a lot of the details, but this is another client who also showed up to talk about uh, her story. And uh, this was also on Jonathan Otto's documentary. Just a little, a little uh, a quick recap here on the genetics. When we're talking about detoxification, these are some of the genes that I look at uh, to determine if your detox pathways are working properly and if we need to supplement with glutathione or if we need to supplement with methylfolate or methyl B12. And... Um, uh, many people are surprised when they find out that, you know, 90% of Caucasians have issues with these genes that does not allow them to detox properly. So we need to supplement accordingly. It's just another, another slide here talking about uh, whenever we have detox, whenever we have toxins in our body, these are the different problems that can occur. It, it, it totally affects the endocrine system whenever we have toxic buildup. <clears throat> this is just a, a great slide, courtesy of my good friend, Dr. Jockers. Um, he, he put this slide together, which is so awesome. I wanted to share it with you. <laughs> it just shows how when you overload your, your body with, with toxins and you're trying to lose weight, um, you're just going to end up making yourself sick. In the long run, you're going to end up gaining more weight. My process when I work with clients, it is a step-by-step -step process. I do things very methodically and I use my data-driven approach in order to understand where we need to start. And I can tell you that 100% of the time when I'm working with people, we always are starting with some sort of a detox. And uh, this is just a big, I wanted to put this slide in because our food pyramid that we have used in the United States for so long has really um, uh, led us into illness and type 2 diabetes. It's actually made us really sick. Many of you might recall that our original food pyramid has seven to nine servings of grains a day. <laughs> That's like the last thing you want to eat. Um, in fact, we really want to eliminate grains altogether. It's going to be healthy fats followed by fruits and vegetables followed by some um, animal proteins, if you eat animal proteins. And some of my clients, I don't have them eating animal protein at all. Again, we can go back and look at genetics um, so that we can understand really, per your genetics, how you should be eating. And um, I, I do that in, in some of my programs uh, where we'll test those specific genes. Remember that you do need to drink water. Your body has to have water in order to detox and in order to work properly. And most of us live in a state of dehydration. We just don't drink enough water. Um, I would say as a generalization, drink between 60 and 100 ounces of water a day and make sure that it's purified. If you're drinking tap water that has fluoride and antibiotics and who knows what else in it, um, you are causing more harm than good to your body. You need to drink a purified water um, I prefer uh, a reverse osmosis water. Then you can add some minerals back in in your, you know, in, in your diet. And, um, but we, we definitely have to have water, especially when we're going through a detox. And these are um, five key factors that we're focusing on when we are doing detox. We're focusing on detoxing at the cellular level, the blood level, in the gut, in the liver, and in the kidneys. And 
just by doing this, for those of you who are not going through a program with me, we had many of you join us today who I have never even met, and, uh, and you might be interested in doing the detox. Um, even if you don't go through an entire program, detoxing alone is going to help you feel better. I will say that when you're detoxing, sometimes, you know, it, sometimes you can have detox responses. Okay, and uh, uh, so if you're going to detox on your own and you're really going to hit it hard here in January or February and you don't have a health coach to guide you through it um, and you're not looking at lab data to understand exactly, you know, maybe you need to open your detox pathways first before you start detoxing, just uh, be aware that when you do detox, sometimes you might feel worse during the detox before you feel better. Make sure you're drinking a lot of water. Make sure you're maybe adding some binders. If you're not, you know, going, you know, if you're not using a health coach to help you, you, you know, you can use something simple like a like a activated charcoal uh, to add to your to your detox so that you can bind any of the toxins that are being released so you can make sure that you're getting them out. You also want to make sure that you're having bowel movements every single day. Um, that's huge. Um, cool little slide uh, just showing the difference between dieting and cleansing. This kind of hits the topic. Uh, I've shown you some other slides. We've, we've already kind of hit this earlier. You want to make sure that you uh, detox before you start dieting or trying to lose weight, rather, um, because if you don't detox first, you're just going to make yourself sick and you're going to have the rebound weight gain. And for those of you who are not already in a program with me, and uh, for those of you who have not already purchased, um, if you want to join my detox and you want to get started with me, then I have a gift for you. My detox program normally is running around 649. And we are running a special. We've extended the special uh, for you guys because I just want to help people as many as I can. And many people try to detox on their own and they find that they're unsuccessful with it. And there's nothing that's more powerful than actually having a health coach to guide you through and help you with your health issues. And my data-driven approach is the best that you're going to find out there. Out there. I can guarantee you that it is. And uh, we're running our special for $4.97 plus you get an appointment with me. So you can get started with me and you can hit the ground running with detox. And why am I allowing you to do this if you're not already a current client of mine? Because 100% of people have to start in the detox anyway. All right, um, the, the difference of starting with me versus starting by yourself is that we can actually order some lab data and get stuff started and actually bring a data-driven approach along with your detox if you want to. Labs are not included in this. If you want to do labs, uh, you know, just go ahead and sign up for the special. Get, get, get yourself in for your first appointment with me, and we can go ahead and get this running for you. If you want to go ahead and buy it, you'll go to modernholistichealth.com slash detox, and you can purchase your kit there, and then we can get you scheduled for a uh, first appointment for those of you who are not already clients. Um, yeah, thank you for joining me today. I'm so excited. Um, I want to open this up for some Q&A. If you guys have some Q&A, go ahead and ask some questions now. Does anyone have any questions? I want to lose weight. All right, I see that question. So, Nazim, if you want to lose weight, we can help you with that. There are different ways of doing it, different ways of going about it. But as we talked about during this session, we've got to look at your data first. Really, that's the most important thing to, to do. If you, know, if you try to lose weight on your own, or if you go to a weight loss center um, and you try to do this on your own, you try to go straight into weight loss, you may end up having yo-yo effects. In other words, you may, you may lose weight, but you may not feel so good in the process, and or most likely you're gonna end up gaining the weight back. So if you, if, if you just wanna lose weight and you don't wanna go through a detox first, you would probably be better served to go through a weight loss center. 
Um, the way that I want to approach this with you is I want to look at some data and let's see what's going on. Let's make sure that your hormones are in check. A lot of people will have estrogen dominance, men and women both. And so let, let, let's look at your hormones and make sure that you're not having a hormone imbalance. Let's look at your thyroid, right? Let's look at your, at your metabolic system and make sure that you don't have metabolic syndrome. Let's address those things and let's get your body back, back in shape. If we make sure that we address those things and get those engines working, a lot of people will lose weight on their own just because they're getting their body systems working again. Whatever weight that we need to still lose after we get all your systems engines working again, then we can go in and it's safe then to go in and do a detox and that's where it's gonna be super, super effective. Um, yes, SP balance. The, so standard process is one of the most popular detoxes that I use with people. In every single one of these case studies, we actually did use the, the SP cleanse or the SP detox by standard process. There are many other ones that I'll use. That is one of the most common ones. Uh, one of the reasons I like, I, I like to use it, all of the detoxes that I use work, but one of the reasons I love to use that one primarily uh, or as a first you know, line of, of detoxing with my patients is because it's food-based. And I want you to understand how powerful that food can be in healing your body. Um, what other question do we have? Ruth, do I need to stop taking current supplements? Uh, no, you do not need to stop taking your current supplements um, while you're doing this detox. In fact, um, the glutathione and the methylation is going to help you continue with the detox path, to keep the detox pathways open and to detox even more efficiently. Um, so no, we don't have to stop that. Um, if you need to, Talk to me about, you know, if, if you're going to feel overwhelmed by doing too many things, we can talk about what we can back off of or reduce the dose of while you're doing the detox. But I typically recommend that you stick to your protocol while you do the detox. Um, Kaylin, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Um, I have had chronic IBS for 14 years and I'm 23. Oh no, you're only 23. And I've spent tons of money on modern medicine. All right. Not uncommon. You know, I just started with another client who's in her 20s who started having diarrhea when she was in her early teens, just like you. She's had problems for many, many years with this, with, with, with IBS. In fact, it's been more on the diarrhea side than anything else. Um, so if we're going to work on that, there's probably chronic underlying infections, probably. But again, we're not gonna know unless we do some uh, labs on you. So we would wanna get together and talk first and see what's going on. At a minimum, I would wanna do a functional blood chemistry panel and a GI stool map test with you. All right, that, I'll, I'll bet you've got some underlying in, infections going on if you've been having that. And as far as modern medicine goes, let, let, let's talk about that. Modern medicine is a reactive care model. Holistic medicine is a proactive care model, okay? We have the best reactive care model in the world. I come from a family of surgeons. My father was a surgeon. Some of my good friends that I've had in my life, some of my best friends are surgeons. If, if we have a disease or we, are, we have some sort of emergency situation, we have some of the best doctors in the whole world here to help literally to save our lives and to keep us from dying and to put us back together. But the, but, but the proactive care model has been lacking. Um, and, and that's what we as, as holistic doctors do. Pharmaceutical drugs are not designed for long-term care. They're not designed to fix the underlying cause of the problem. All right, so if you want to fix the underlying cause of the problem, that's where the holistic model is gonna help you. And that's why you haven't gotten better, is because you've been taking medications for all of these years, um, you know, and, and you haven't been getting to the root cause of the problem. So I would love to chat with you. You are welcome to schedule a consultation on our website at modernholistichealth.com. You can schedule a consultation with me. Let's talk about what's going on. 
and and let's put a plan of action together for what labs that we need to order for you so that we can start working with you. I will gladly roll in the cost of the consultation into your actual first visit if you decide that you want to go ahead and move forward. Um, that's something we can definitely fix. Working with gut issues is so easy for us as, as holistic practitioners. And uh, I'm sure if you have chronic IBS, you probably are having brain fog and fit chronic fatigue and probably some anxiety too. And a lot of your brain chemistry is made in your gut. So let's, let's, let's definitely get on a call together. Please go and schedule with me. Um, Peg, hey, how are you? Hi, Elena, this is Peg. Good to hear your voice again. Can you offer a dumbed down program for folks like me who can't, who can't afford the whole thing with labs? I totally get your focus on data-based programs, but it gets too expensive for me, and as a result, I don't start it. Um, yeah, we can totally do that. Um, I can send you my, um, I can totally send you our detox. So we've actually been building a detox booklet. And uh, so I can totally do that with you. You can do it food-based without any additional supplementation. The supplementation is gonna make it a lot faster. But um, I'll be happy to share it, to share our, our little ebook that we've been putting together. I don't have the graphics in it yet, but a lot of the, the nitty-gritty is in there, all the important stuff, what foods to avoid, what foods to eat, um, and you know, celery juice, uh, start, start juicing celery juice every single day. You want to do it organic and you want to, you know, lay off of grains and sugars and dairy. Um, but yes, you can totally do it without the additional supplements, but the additional supplements make it go a lot faster. And, uh, I love you too. And, uh, there's, yes, absolutely. We can help you Peg. Just go ahead and shoot me an email. Okay. DRV at modern and, uh, Totally, we'll totally take, take care of you. Um, Nazim, our office is located here in Austin, Texas. Now, we are a virtual clinic. I actually went virtual this summer. And uh, so we actually have patients, clients, all over the country and even outside of the country. So we can still help you, it's not a problem. Whenever we order labs, our process goes like this. We order blood labs, we send you the, the blood lab orders in, in an email, and for any other labs that we need to do, GI map, neurotransmitter, genetics, hormones, whatever, we actually ship them right to your doorstep. And uh, like I said, we have clients all over the country, and we do it using a platform called Zoom, and it's very similar to this. We can actually, uh, well, yeah, I mean, we actually can see each other. I can do a screen share. We can go over labs together, and so that's how I actually do work. And uh, Kaylin, thank you so much. Um, I look forward to meeting you too. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining today. Um, and then what is the thyroid supplement that you suggest, Corey? Okay, Corey, so that depends. Do you really have a thyroid problem? Or is it, or is it uh, a secondary to an underlying infection? Or is it secondary to... Uh, to, to you getting fluoride in your body, which is blocking selenium receptor sites, which is then causing a thyroid problem? Or is it toxins that are causing your thyroid problem? Did you see, um, Corey, the slide that I was showing you, the case study on the thyroid? Let me know if you saw that, because that, that particular thyroid case was not an actual thyroid issue. So I didn't give her you know, necessarily a thyroid supplement. What we did was we actually went in and we did some antimicrobials and we did some detox to, get, to fix the thyroid. So we have to figure out, is the thyroid problem secondary to hormone imbalance, secondary to infections? Is it secondary to toxins in the body like fluoride? Um, or is it a real thyroid problem? Um, if it's a real thyroid issue, we have a lot of different supplements that we can give, and it depends on what's going on with the person. We can use anything from a combination of different herbals um, to a combination of herbals with vitamins to actually uh, address the, the nutritional deficiencies that are causing the thyroid issue. And sometimes uh, we will use glandulars, uh, you know, similar to nature thyroid. Um, so it just depends on what's going on with the thyroid as to what type of supplement that we use. 
Myla mentioned, you've mentioned fluoride, is using fluoride toothpaste safe? So I, I don't think that using fluoride toothpaste is the best idea, all right? Fluoride blocks selenium receptor sites. And selenium is used in almost 90 different chemical reactions in the body, including dopamine and serotonin production, including thyroid hormone production, and many, many others. And um, what happens is that fluoride is so similar in molecular structure to selenium that it will go in and block the, the receptor site on the cell. And so then selenium is not able to get in. And so, you know, let's talk about fluoride for a minute. You know, fluoride is a neurotoxin and fluoride is not necessary to prevent cavities. Um, that's, you know, hopefully we're going to see big changes in that in the next decade that uh, people are going to change their mind and you're going to see it all over the media. But, um, you know, that's my take on it. There are some really good non-fluorinated toothpaste out there. I love the one from, um, I love the one. Greg, could you maybe go grab those toothpaste really quick for me so I can read them the ingredients? I love the one from doTERRA. There's a really, really good one that tastes delicious and it's from doTERRA and it has natural antimicrobials in it. And then there's another one, and I can't remember the name brand, um, but I'm, Greg's going to get those for me because I want to show you what it is that, that we use in the house. We've tried all different kinds, and we've actually found a few that we really like. Um, does anyone else have any questions? All right, take a look at these. So this is the On Guard from doTERRA. And let me read it to you. I really, really love this. Um, it's got um, peppermint oil, wild orange, clove, which is an antimicrobial. Um, all of these are the, are the actual essential oils. This is an essential oil company, by the way. It has cinnamon, um, cinnamon bark oil, eucalyptus leaf oil, rosemary, uh, leaf oil, which is also an antimicrobial, and then it has stevia and a couple of other things in it. It's got myrrh, which is also an antimicrobial. It's, it's really, really good. I love this. And then this, oh, this one, I love this one too. This is uh, Himalaya Botanicals, and this one, oh my gosh, it's hard for me to read it. Um, give me a second. This one has uh, coconut oil in it. I'm not reading every single one because the ingredient list is kind of long. Um, it's got peppermint, it's got zinc, um, it has thyme leaf, which is also an antimicrobial, um, and a few other things. I'm having a hard time reading it because, um, I need, I, I'm going to go get glass. I'm going to get better glasses this year, but, um, this is a really, really good one also. Um, what else do we have? Jennifer Hart, I need help getting the detox kit after the webinar. Still having trouble with standard process. Okay, I will help you with that. I'll definitely help you with that. Let's uh, figure that out today afterwards. Um, and you've got my number. I think you've got my number. I'll reach out to you though afterwards uh, so that we can go ahead and I, I, can, I can help you uh, get online for that. And uh, we'll get that ordered for you, Jennifer. And you're so welcome. Um, and then Corey, do you deal with COMP as well as MTHFR gene issues? I deal with many more genetics than that. So yes, I absolutely do work with those. Um, in, my, in my primary genetic panel that I do, we're looking at 56 different genes that are all major engine drivers in the body. And so as far as the MTHFR, we're looking at about 15 different methylation genes. You can't really understand the process of how your body is methylating if you don't look at all the genes. And looking at MTHFR is only one small piece of the puzzle and you cannot see what's going on with your methylation processes if you don't look at all of the genes. So we look at MTHFR and a bunch of others. And with the COMPT, uh, the COMPT gene, that's, that's responsible for breaking down dopamine. Um, yes, we look at the COMP gene. We also look at the MAO genes and the GAD genes, which are responsible for breaking down the serotonin and producing GABA. So we're looking at those, but we also look at the neurotransmitter testing also because 
remember that just because you have a mutation in, let's say, a COMPS gene, for example, it doesn't necessarily guarantee or tell you that that gene is malexpressing. And so we want to look at the neurotransmitter panel so that we can see what the dopamine levels are doing, right? And so by looking at, at a combination of the brain chemistry panel and the genetics with the brain chemistry genes in there, then we can really see if the gene is malexpressing. Remember, you have a lot of different brain chemicals, a lot of different neurotransmitters, and you can have a combination of those that are off that are contributing to your, to your issues. It's not just a serotonin issue or just a dopamine issue. And uh, I'll be happy to work with you on that. Working with neurotransmitters is my passion. I love working with brain chemistry and neurodegenerative issues. Um, that's a huge, huge passion of mine, mainly because when I got really, really sick, uh, physically, I also became very sick mentally as well. I couldn't function. I lost my memory. I had a debilitating anxiety and uh, and very very bad depression. And so, uh, and, and and because of the work that I've done, that's been able to bring me back to total health. That's a huge passion of mine to work with people that are struggling with that. So I would love to work with you. You can schedule from our website if you're interested. Um, does anyone have any other questions? Any other questions? Well, I hope you I hope that you loved this today. I hope that you got something out of this and that you can understand why it's so important for you to detoxify first so that then we can address the other issues. Um, great. Well, I think I don't I, I don't see any other I don't see any other questions coming in. So you guys go and enjoy this beautiful day. I'm looking outside. And it is, thank you, Tracy. Thank you. I'm glad that you liked it. I, I want to bring value and I want to educate you guys and I want to empower you. And uh, thank you so much for letting me know that you got something out of this. That, that means so much to me. Um, yeah, you guys go outside, get outside today and enjoy this day. I love you guys so much. Even those of you that I haven't met yet. And I hope that I get a chance to meet you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye guys.